Hi and welcome back to That Office Guy. In today's video, we're taking a look at the average A function. This is a level up from the average function that we spoke about earlier in the week. This particular function is fantastic at getting you to a true value that you are looking for. Sometimes there are zeros, sometimes there are text inside your data set that could skew your average function. So this particular function helps you make sure that you are confident in the value that you're returning. As we get into the video, if you find it useful and informative, then do go ahead and hit the like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new, then subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and you will not miss another hint or tip from Microsoft Excel. Right, with all this said, done and out of the way, let's jump on down to Microsoft Excel and start talking about how to use the average A function. Okay, guys, so here we are in Excel, and there's a few things we're going to want to just talk about first. Obviously, the average A function, it can uh, its arguments can follow the following, right? It can be numbers, ranges, arrays, or references that contain numbers, text representations of numbers, or logical values such as true and false in a reference. The logical values and text representations of numbers that you type directly into the list of arguments are also counted. Arguments that contain true evaluate as one, arguments that contain false evaluate as a zero. Uh, arrays or reference arguments that contain text evaluates as a zero. Empty text also evaluates as a zero. Um, if, the, or if an argument is an array or reference, uh, only values in that array or reference are used. Empty cells or and text values in the array reference are ignored. Now, arguments that are error values or text that cannot be translated into numbers also cause errors. Now, if you do not want to include logical values and text representation of numbers in a reference um, as a part of the calculation, use the average function instead, okay? So what you're talking about, obviously, previously, the average function, um, basically, it completely omits um, blanks and and uh, and text, right? So if you have text in your data set, um, then ultimately the average function ignores that. But if you need to include it, let's say you have an NA and you want to include an NA as a zero um, or something to that effect, then actually using the average A function just makes things a little bit more uh, easier and um, gives you what you're looking for, right? So it's understanding the difference between average and average A. Um, average is going to be great at omitting um, you know, text and, and errors, whereas average A is going to include them and give you a different average value than what you're used to seeing with just the average function. So let's get into how to do this because it is actually quite simple uh, once you kind of know the difference between the two formulas. Um, so the first example that we have here is average A open up a parentheses, A2 to A6, okay? So basically what we're looking for is this particular range just here on the left-hand side. Now, from there, we can see this is the average num uh, average of the numbers above, right? Um, and um, the, to the text, not available. Um, the cell uh, with the text not available is used in the calculation. So we can come into this calculation here and we can see that this is what is highlighted. Now, um, basically, as we said before, right, that text uh, is used inside there. So if we actually just highlighted this without it, we actually find that without the text, it actually evaluates to an average of seven rather than 5.6. But the uh, text is actually being treated as a zero, right? And that obviously brings your average down. Um, so if we were to just use a normal average function, we would have seven as the average returned result. Um, however, because we're using average A, the returned result is actually 5.6, and that is because the text is actually counted as a zero, bringing your average down. So really, really useful if you know the difference between average and average A, if you know that you want to treat text inside your data set as a zero. Um, so really useful. Now, the second uh, example that we have here is average of the numbers um, and the empty cell, okay, in B2. So here we can see that we're averaging um, all of these numbers here, but not the text value, but we are also including um, the B2, which is an empty cell, right? This actually results in a zero. And this is uh, basically saying that the empty uh, cell there is basically being treated um, as if it, it doesn't exist. It's, there's nothing there, right? It's completely empty. Um, so the average then comes in at seven, okay? So that really, really useful stuff. Um, if you wanted to kind of treat that like the way around. Now, um, if you were to then actually go ahead and type some text in here, um, then you actually get back to that 5.6, uh, uh, right? Because basically text is treated as zero, but a blank cell is treated 
uh, just like that. It's blank, it's omitted, it's not actually um, counted in the calculation. So um, again, there's lots of different ways that you can use the average A function. I really want to just make this video quite slick um, and quite a short video just to kind of explain the differences between an average function and an average A function and when you might want to use an average A instead of an average. Um, so again, really, really useful. Um, it depends obviously on your data sets and how you've got your documents um, kind of structured out. Um, but ultimately you're gonna to want to choose the right formula that suits your criteria. Um, so in the most cases, um, average is fine. It's good if you've got good data structure, um, but sometimes you actually do have text inside your data sets and actually you need to treat that text as a zero, in which case an average A is the formula that you want to be using. Um, guys, I'm not going to go on and on and on about average A. I've done this quite a few times on a few different videos, so do check those out if they're of interest to you. Um, I will keep this video there for today. Now, if you do find this useful, informative, hit the like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new, then do go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and you will not miss another hint or tip when it comes to Microsoft Excel. Guys, with all this said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.